Thank you for joining in the fourth session on the Data Migration Demystified webinar for PTC Windchill. Today, I would like to talk about the migration journey, which includes an overview of our experience and our uh, solutions for it. But of furthermore, I would like to talk about a reference project and give some best practices on how to migrate into Windchill. All right, let's go. I would like to give you a quick overview on ProStep's partnership with PTC. So ProStep is a PTC software gold and furthermore, a PTC worldwide service partner. What we are providing are commercial off-the-shelf products, so-called connectors and controllers to Winchell, Winchell Plus, CodeBeamer, but as well as Arena. We also provide integrations, that's our controllers for CAT integrations like Creo and integrations for WGM, that's the Winchell Workgroup Manager. And furthermore, we are provider of SAS solutions uh, for integrating Arena, for example, with Jira. And furthermore, and last but not least, we are also providing expert consultation and execution for, of course, integration and migration projects, either cross vendor, cross domain, and from and to Windchill. So that's our experience today. And what we are going to focus on are the migration aspects for Windchill today. This slide represents an excerpt of the OpenPDM integration and migration platform ecosystem. So as you can see in the middle, represented by those two hands, these are our core services, something like an asynchronous process service, a mapping engine and things like that. But around that core services, we have multiple connectors and controllers listed uh, as so-called puzzle pieces. So as we have seen in the slide before, we are partner of PTC, and this is the reason why we can offer connections to Arena PLM and PTC Windshield, as you can see that on the lower end of the slide. But all the other connectors and controllers are used most often during integrations and migrations uh, for Windshield as well. So all of those are uh, part of the ECO system that we are applying when performing migrations and integrations. So that's an overview of that. Now let's have a deeper look into those two puzzle pieces down there. So when we pick this puzzle piece for PTC Windshell and bring it in context of a principal system architecture, then we see that on that slide, how that looks like. So we are starting from the left where we are exporting the legacy systems. There are many cases where you can export a legacy system directly from the database, which we use very often for large scale migrations where we need to pull a lot of data at a, in, a, in a minimal time frame from a given system because going through APIs is always slower than pulling data directly from databases. But of course, that incorporates that you need to understand very well the layout of the database. But the other um, appliance that you can use is uh, the system connectors of OpenPDM. So going through the APIs, if going through the database itself doesn't make sense for the migration. So that's especially the thing that you want to do when you're doing integrations. And if you have some more time uh, doing the migrations, for example, when you're applying uh, incremental migrations and a system connector is completely okay, because you don't want, you, you don't need to export everything at the same time. So this is for exporting. From OpenPDM Migrate, we have uh, certain building blocks which directly export from databases. So for example, from uh, 3DX or from Smart Team, uh, we do have those building blocks as uh, project ready um, building blocks already in place. So once you've pulled data, it will reside in the OpenPDM Migrate um, staging databases. This is the one, this is called stage source, where we can put all the data that we exported from the database, uh, from the legacy systems. And then we have a second one called stage target here on the right, where we perform the mapping from the left to the right. But before we are doing the actual mapping, of course, we can enrich the data. We can also enrich the data during the mapping. So one of the typical use cases that we have here is, for example, when we are pulling from a TDM system, let's say smart team and the customer is already using SAP. And during the migration, uh, the customer requests that we get additional material information from, 
from SAP so that we are enriching the data during the transformation before we are importing the data into Windshield. So in that case, we can use, for example, the OpenPDM SAP connector to pull the corresponding material information from SAP, enrich it in our staging database, and then performing the mapping over to stage target, where we then have an enriched Windshield data model that we can import into Windshield. Furthermore, what is often done during migrations is enriching the data through additional ZSV or Excel information. So that's also something that can be incorporated during that migration, of course. When it comes to importing the data into Windchill, there we can apply different technologies. So one is going through Java, uh, the message server of Windchill, or going through the more modern REST interface, which is not completely uh, feature um, compliance to everything, which is available in Windchill. There's uh, the Java interface is more compliant to that, but for certain aspects, REST interface is okay. We do have connectors for both, either Java or REST. For migrations, if we are importing, most of the time um, the Java Windchill connector will be used. Then we have the WGM JLink controller, which enables us to import CAD files in batch like Creo, like a TRV5. And then last but not least, we have the WBM loader. WBM stands for Winchell Bulk Migrator. WBM is a framework that is provided by PTCs themselves, so by the vendor. And that framework enables you to import mass data into Winchell, which is a way to go when you want to load millions of data sets in a very limited time. So what OpenPDM is providing here is a WBM loader to load the corresponding data into the WBM staging database. And then using the WBM, you will load the actual data into Windshield. So we're going into the pros and cons of these different aspects on the next slides. But before that, I would like to have a look into a reference project. So as a reference project, I would like to present the Winchell migration project for one of the largest German automotive suppliers. Currently, they are using 3DX um, and they decided to switch over to, uh, to, to Winchell. They are also using SAP these days, but SAP will, will stay as an integrated tool with, together with Winchell. So what we are doing from the ProStep side is here, we have taken up the complete migration project as a main contractor. And this, con this migration project not only is a migration into Windchill from SAP and 3DX, but it's also uh, migrating into Planisware and Dynamics 365. So what we technology-wise are doing here is the complete 3DX export and the SAP export for the data which is, was exported previously from 3DX. And furthermore, we are performing the Windchill import uh, to the WBM, using the WBM. And the import into Planisphere and Dynamics 365 are executed by subcontractors that we are um, that, that where we are providing the corresponding information as control files to the corresponding subcontractors. Um, so this migration project is about 1 million CATIA v5 and CAT metadata together with the files. Uh, furthermore, we have from SAP 2 million additional this and mat metadata pieces with the corresponding binaries or originals, how they are called in SAP. This migration is a big bang migration because we're using WBM. And what we are doing is we are performing the exports using Delta mechanisms. So we are exporting from 3DX and SAP uh, one time as, as a front export and then further, further on as, as Delta when it comes to the actual productive migration to make sure that this migration will fit into a weekend plus. So something like an extended weekend for the complete migration. Of course, we are here migrating the CAT files directly into Winchell, not using WBMFF because that is the only way to migrate uh, 1 million plus CATIA v5 files during the weekend into, into Winchell. The project execution time is somewhere around 12 months, and we are planning to finalize the project by end of this year. As I already said, there are some APIs that you can leverage for the import. So you can use the Java REST API uh, or the Winchell bike migrator. What you shouldn't do with Winchell is a direct import into the, data, into the database. So going into the corresponding tables of Winchell and import the data directly in them. That's not supported by the vendor and you will have problems with that. So don't do it. 
Um, we can apply both different aspects, so we can use the Java REST or uh, and with combination with the Windshield Bike Migrator. That's possible, but you really need to look in which cases you want to cover with which interface. Because the Java REST API, it's quite slow because it's kind of acting like an actual user would import the data. And uh, furthermore, you cannot adjust fields which are system level attributes, such like last modification date. Right? So if you want to do things like that, WBM is probably the way you want to go. With CWBM, you have the fastest import mechanism available for PTC Windshield. But if you're planning for an incremental migration, it's very, very hard to execute with WBM because the tool, the framework itself, which is delivered by PTC, is not enabled to import third level, um, third, third level data as a Delta migration. It's supported between a windshield windshield migration, there Delta is possible, but with, the, with legacy systems that is not possible and it will cost a very high amount of effort to get the windshield bulk migrator Delta ready for um, legacy systems. Furthermore, also you, would, uh, you should know that when you're using the WBM, you have a limited data model validation. So not everything that you're defining in your data model as a as a validation criteria will be executed. This is done by the Java REST API. So using that, you can be quite sure that your data is in a very good quality when it's getting imported, because if certain metadata entries and things like that are not okay, um, the Java REST API will complain directly about that. The Windshield Bike Migrator isn't complaining about everything. So the CAT import, when we're going over to that topic, first of all, there is no 100% success ratio. It, it never was, it never will. Because if you would like to have that, you need to do a full quality check of all the CAT data before uh, actually importing the data. And that's something that usually there is not enough time executing that. So using the WBM, you can apply a tool called WBMFF. Uh, this is a tool which is first analyzing the CAT files and it's practically only applicable for data which is not version. So you can load the latest and greatest data with that. But it's also, let's say, it's sometimes tricky to use it because it's not completely stable. For example, using SolidWorks data with it and things like that. So um, using WBMFF for an extensive amount of data is uh, tricky to do. So therefore, the other aspect that you could do is uh, investigate the data before or even leverage the information that is available in the old PDM system and then based on that, directly load the data, the CAT files and their dependencies and the data model and everything using the WBBM, not using the WBMFF. If you're doing that, you need to know how Windshield works internally. So you need to know how the data model looks like and what the methodology behind that is. Using the WGM, the workgroup manager is okay. You can do that as well, but you need to make sure, but you need to understand that the WBM is quite slow compared to using WBM. And furthermore, um, you can use uh, parallel CAT sessions to scale the performance, so that's good. But um, if, be, please be aware of that for the WGBM, WGM, not every CAT system is available as a CAT integration in batch. So even if you have the CAT integration in front of you, it might be that it's not batch ready. Last but not least, you do not generate viewables during the, during the actual migration create viewables after the migration. In the last four sessions of data migration demystified, I provided quite an extensive amount of information and best practices regarding migration projects. It was a very compressed um, webinar. It's only 15 minutes per session, so there is not much space for anything else. But still, if you would like to get in touch with us and get more information, maybe deta more detailed information, or if you're looking for help in your project, just get in touch with us. ProStep is there for you. Thank you very much for watching the webinar series on data migration demystify PTC Windshield. Um, I hope the information provided was very helpful to you. And if you have any question, feel free asking by the provided email addresses or via telephone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.